The Lord has sworn and will not relent. You are a priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Hello and welcome to our program called Seven. We uh, explain to you the rites of the seven sacraments. In today's episode, we will take you through the rite of the seventh and the last sacrament, the sacrament of priesthood. And we'll go through the ranks or orders of priesthood starting with the deacons. The sacrament of priesthood is the holy sacrament by which the bishop lays his hand on the elected candidate in order for the Holy Spirit to descend on this person to grant him one of the priestly ranks. As a result, the ordained person is granted the authority to perform the ministry of the church, whether the holy sacraments, teaching or others. This is called laying of hands or ordination. The word priest is derived from the Hebrew word kohen, meaning priest. The word oab in Coptic, meaning priest, is derived from the Coptic word eth oab, meaning saintly or righteous. Hence, oab is given to the priest to signify that he is a righteous man ordained by holiness and purity. The Lord Jesus Christ himself instituted this sacrament when he chose the twelve of his followers and consecrated them for ministry. He called his disciples to him and from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles. He gave them the authority of absolution and binding. He breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. And if you retain the sins of any, they are retained. Notice that this took place before the Pentecost. And the gift of the Holy Spirit here is the gift of ordination. Note, only to his disciples, Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And only to them he delivered the mystery of his body and blood, the Eucharist. Now let's look at the honor of priesthood. St. Paul said, No man takes this honor to himself, but he who is called by God, just as Aaron was. And let the elders, the priests, who rule well, be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in the word and doctrine. So who are the people qualified for this spiritual position? Let's take a look at some of the guidelines. Priesthood is a divine call, as the Bible said. And he, Jesus, went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed twelve, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses, and to cast out demons. Thus only God can call you for this spiritual vocation, and it's not the intervention of any human source. Priesthood is also a divine choice. As St. Luke said, Now it came to pass in those days that Jesus went up to the mountain to pray and continued all night in prayer to God. And when it was day, he called his disciples to him, and from them he chose twelve whom he also named apostles. So there's a lot of prayer and fasting to choose the right person to be a spiritual father for this position. Priesthood is a divine appointment. The Bible says, After these things the Lord appointed seventy others also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Priesthood is a divine selection as we know what happened with Barnabas and Saul. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. The other point is, priesthood is faithfulness and stewardship as it was said. Who then is that faithful and wise steward? whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ 
and stewards of the mysteries, the sacraments of God. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. The third point is, priesthood is also consecration or sanctification. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, For their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. To sanctify means to consecrate. Our Lord has consecrated Himself for the ministry and redemption. Likewise, all ranks of the priesthood are consecrated for the ministry according to the example of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great High Priest. So you see, no one takes this honor upon himself. This honor is granted and given by God, just as He granted the honor to Aaron. Likewise, Christ did not glorify himself to become high priest, but the Father said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And also, you are the priest forever according to the order of Melchizedek. Now let's take a look at the ranks of priesthood. There are three ranks in priesthood. One, the order of deacons, two, the order of priests, and three, the order of bishops. Deacons are servants, priests are teachers, bishops are overseers and shepherds. Let's look at the first one, the order of deacons, and yes, the first step to priesthood is deaconship. Diakon, pronounced as such in Greek, is a Syrian word meaning servant. The deacon's responsibility is to help the priest or bishop perform the religious ministry like the seven sacraments and especially in the holy liturgy as the deacon is the spiritual eye of the priest. The first church appointed seven deacons who were full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom to help in service as it was said. The twelve summoned the multitude of disciples and said, Seek out from among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. When they were chosen, they set them before the apostles, and when they had prayed, they laid their hands on them. The apostles stipulated the following three conditions for nominating deacons. Number one, they must be full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom. Number two, they should be appointed by the apostles through the laying on of hands with prayers. And number three, they should carry out the certain responsibilities in the church. Our teacher St. Paul also specified the requirements of the deacon in his first epistle to Timothy, chapter 3, from 8 to 13. Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to too much wine, not greedy for money, holding the ministry of faith with a pure conscience, ruling their children and their house well, should be tested first and then proved and found blameless so they can be ordained. Although the rank of deacon is the most junior rank of priesthood, St. Paul praises it saying, For those who served well as deacons obtained for themselves a good standing and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. There are five ranks of deacons. In ascending order, let's look at them. Number one, Epsaltus, which is the hymnist. Two, Ornostus, which is the reader. Three, Ebediacon, or subdeacon. Four, Diacon, full deacon. And five, Archdiacon, the leader of deacons. We shall now discuss each rank in terms of responsibilities, conditions, clothing, and rights of ordination. The first one is Epsaltus, <coughs> the rank of Epsaltus. Epsaltus is derived from the Coptic word Epsalmos, meaning psalm or hymn. Hence, Epsaltus means hymnist. According to this title, his responsibilities include learning and singing the hymns and praises of the church. This rank is mentioned in some of the early church canons. Hymnists also must be blessed by the bishop. Generally, 
It is the children who are ordained a psaltos from primary to high school. For as the psalm says, out of the mouth of babes and infants you have ordained strength. The wisdom behind ordaining young boys is to instill within them at a young age the faith and rituals of the church so that they may taste of its sweetness, become steadfast in the orthodox faith and an active member of the church. Hence we will grow in the church with spirituality and holiness. As David the psalmist says, But I am like a green olive tree in the house of God. I will praise you forever. The Epsaltus is permitted to wear the tunic without the stall or patrashel. Let's now look at the right of the Epsaltus. Michael Epsaltus in the Holy Orthodox Church of God. Amen. Genefran in Mephiot Nemepshiri. Nem bebnev maeth oweb o noti in oot. If is mara oot in je if noti fiot. Pi pantukrator. Amen. If is mara oot in je bef monogenis in jiri isos be Christos ben shois. Amen. If is mara oot in je bebnev maeth oweb in paraklito. After the reconciliation prayer of the Divine Liturgy, the Archdeacon or the Higomen takes the children who will be ordained the Psaltus to stand before the altar in reverence. The Bishop then advises them regarding regular church attendance, the importance of learning hymns, attending Sunday school classes and the importance of respectful and decent behavior whether in the church, home or in society. He advises them regarding obedience and to take care not to insult, lie or swear. He also tells them regarding the importance of regular confession and receiving the Holy Communion. He must be sure that those who are being ordained are fasting so that they may receive the Holy Communion after the Holy Mass. The bishop must receive a verbal undertaking from the children's parents that they will help their children fulfill these commandments and not forbid them from coming to church for any reason. The bishop then instructs the priest to care for them spiritually and keep close watch on their spiritual life and regularity in confession. The bishop also instructs the older deacons to take the time to teach and explain simply to the young deacons the rites and the church hymns. The bishop then begins the ordination for the rank of Epsaltus by completing the three signs of the cross on the children. The children are then given their service tunics and stoles, which the bishop makes the sign of the cross over them three times before they wear them. <laughs> They then stand before the uh, adult Epsaltus deacons to share with them in the responses and hymns of the Divine Mass, followed by them receiving the Holy Communion after the old deacons. Their parents rejoice for them, and by coming to the church regularly, they will grow in virtues and worship and become righteous people. The second order of diaconship is called uh, ognostos or reader. Ognostis is Greek word derived from two words. Anagnosma meaning reading and tis meaning related to. This ognostis means the reader. Conditions of his ordination. Generally not less than 18 years of age recognized for his good manner and deeds, recommended without objection by the priests and congregation.
tested for his reading ability of the Holy Bible and its comprehension. Regular in his spiritual life such as confession, Holy Communion, reading of the Holy Bible and coming to church. He must be ready for service and full of zeal. He must be humble and not want to boast about his voice or service. He should be fluent in his native language and Coptic and in knowing by heart the responses said before and after the epistle readings and read the daily readings. The Ognostos must be familiar in all the church hymns and praises and chanting them with the choir of deacons during the liturgy and other occasions. And for our Orthodox he must read clearly and without mistakes to enable the congregation to hear and understand. And in many churches in our days, they give deacon lessons to their young deacons on a weekly basis with revisions and exams. The Ognostos wears a white tunic with the stole. He wears the stole crossing over the left shoulder and around his waist as a belt and ends of the stole hanging from his shoulders. Stole is the Greek word patra shelion, meaning grace. And thus the rank of deacon is a grace which is taken by an individual and carried on his shoulders. It hangs on the back like a cross to symbolize that he is sharing in carrying the cross for the Lord said, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. The stole comes around the waist like a belt as proof of the preparation and readiness for service like John the Baptist who wore a leather belt around his waist. Now concerning the rites of the ordination of Ognostus is similar to the Epsaltus in addition to the cutting of the hair. The bishop takes the scissors and makes five small cuts in his hair in the sign of the cross starting from the middle of his head while saying the three blessings of the Holy Trinity and giving him a special deacon's name while doing this. We ask and entreat you, O Master, Lord God, the Pantocrator, accept unto you your servant Andrew as reader in your holy church, make him understand your truth, grant him fear in your service, make him worthy to touch the vessels, and be an honored reader before you, that he may your compassion with those who have pleased you since the beginning, for mercy is in your will, and honor and worship are due unto you from everyone, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Now Clipping of the hair signifying the cutting off or the removal of all evil thoughts and habits, for the head sets the senses. Clipping the hair in the shape of a cross while the bishop mentions the Holy Trinity is proof of the graces and talents that the deacon receives from the Holy Trinity by the worthiness of Christ's death on the cross. The five crosses, hair clippings, symbolize the five wounds of Christ the Lord, the three nails, the crown of thorns and the spear, the wound in his side. It is as I, the deacon, proclaims, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being confirmed to his death. The third rank of diaconship is called ebediacon or subdeacon. Ebediacon is a Greek word composed of two parts, epi, meaning assistant, 
and diakon meaning deacon. Hence, ebibiakon means assistant deacon. Conditions of his ordinations are showing excellence in ecclesiastical subjects, wisdom, and faithful in his deeds. Generally, the ebidiakon should not be ordained younger than the age of 20. He must be recommended by the congregation and the chorus deacons. He must be known for his righteousness and faithful deeds. His responsibility are as follows. He is responsible for organizing the seating in the church, that is, the place allocated for men, women, and so on. Lighting the church lamps, keeping in order the church books and the priestly and servants' vestments, preparing the censers and helping other deacons. Note, these responsibilities are additional to the responsibilities he had as an ognostos. He must still fulfill the responsibilities of ognostos in case he needs to step into that role at any time. The epidiacon's vestments. The service vestments, including the stall, are the same worn the same way as the agnostos. The stall bound around his waist as a belt signifies an obligation of duties and services and dedication to the church rules which he must follow and behave accordingly. The rules are During his ordination, the bishop does not lay his hands on him but rather makes the sign of the cross on his head and an ebidiakon is permitted to marry. Now we come to the fourth rank of diaconship or full deacon. Diakon in Syrian or diakon in Greek and Coptic mean servant. His work is to recite all the liturgical responses. In the past no one was allowed to enter the sanctuary except the bishop, priest and the diakon or archdeacon also kings who were believers and anointed by chrism. The deacon may carry the chalice and give the congregation from the precious blood of the Lord during communion, if there is no other assistant priest serving. He reads the Holy Gospel of the liturgy and may teach or preach by the permission of the bishop or priest. The deacon helps the priest in the service by visiting the congregation widows, orphans, and the sick. If he was ordained before marriage, he does not marry. If he had a wife and was ordained, then his wife died, he remains without marriage like the case of a priest. The deacon's vestments. The complete deacon or diacon, an archdeacon, leader of deacons, wear the tunic and the red stole signifying the cleansing by the blood of Christ. The stole must hang on the left shoulder which denotes carrying the cross. The hem of the stall symbolizes the angel's wings. As St. John Chrysostom said, notice the spiritual joy you who resemble angels by wearing the nice stalls that is placed on your left shoulders. The deacon and archdeacon may wear special head coverings which are decorated by crosses and images of Christ and the saints. Whilst there are still some deacons who maintain this tradition, it is not quite so common in our days. However, it is preferable for the deacon to wear this covering for it is an old church tradition. Now we come to the highest rank of diaconship called archdiacon. Archdiacon is a Greek word composed of two parts, arch or archi, meaning leader, and diakon, of course, meaning diakon. Hence, archidiakon means the leader of diakons. Conditions of ordination for an archdiakon are to be well knowledgeable and experienced in regards to the holy books and totally learned and experienced concerning the work of the Apsaltos, Ernastos, Ebediakon, and Deacon for all these ranks are led by the archdiacon. Must be well learned concerning the church rites and hymns for all the church occasions. Must be no younger than 28 years of age. 
must be known for his virtues, good conduct and good deeds. He must be recommended by the choir and the congregation. The responsibilities of an archdeacon consist of the following. He must lead all the ranks of deacons specifying their roles and responsibilities and managing their needs. He must become like the ear and eye of the bishop, informing him about the situations of the congregation day by day. And he presents those who have been chosen for the various ranks of deacons. Well, this concludes today's episode. We will continue with the seventh sacrament next week. Thank you for watching and God bless you.